Hello and welcome to another edition of the LCU Coaches Show on 99.1 Shap Radio and the LCU Podcast. I'm Brendan Riker and I am joined by LCU Head Men's Soccer Coach Colin Cohn. Coach, how are you today? Doing good, just trying to rest up from this weekend. <laughs> yes, we are coming off fall break, but no, no rest for the men's team. They were on the road, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Coach, I wanted to start the show uh, because it's been a while since we talked, about two weeks. But but since since then, uh, you and your wife Anna announced that y'all will be blessed with baby twins coming in March 2024. How excited are y'all? Yeah, uh, excited, nervous, uh, you know, anxious. Um, but yeah, we're we're really excited, and what a blessing from the Lord. And um, yeah, just uh, yeah, very excited, but also obviously nervous. It's our first, so uh, we're getting hit with two, so double the trouble. <laughs> Have any of the players come up to you yet and be like, "Hey, you should name one of your twins after me yet?" Or yeah, they're uh, they, they'll do stuff like that, and you know, but they they also have been really really kind and uh, just uh, encouraging, and um, you know, it's it's good to you know, I, I I got blessed where I got to kind of grow up in that world when I was a little kid, and you know, so I I love the idea of you know having our kids one day being able to grow up you know near a team and around around the guys and. Um, you know, they're, they're good guys. They're good examples. So, um, yeah, just, uh, they're, they've been really encouraging overall. That's awesome to hear, to hear that the players are already embracing your family. And I, I, I come from a coach's kid background where I grew up around players and I get to see them and they kind of get to mentor me or I get to look up to them. So Mm -hmm. that's really cool to hear, uh, hear that now, uh, coach, since we've talked, uh, the Chaparrales have started conference play and uh, yet to have a win in conference play yet, but you've seen some results that have been uh, really good and then some results that um, definitely want to improve on. Let's start by looking at uh, that game at St. Mary's. And this was a game, Coach, where uh, you were down 2-0 in the, fir- in the first half and it would have been very easy to uh, just kind of you know, scratch the game plan and then just kind of, you know, take one on the chin. But the Chaparrales fought back against the 16th ranked team in the country at that point uh, on the road in San Antonio, and they fought to a draw 2-2. Two to two, And uh, that was a really big uh, result and a, probably a, what, you know, obviously you want to win the circumference play, but to get that result on the road to start conference play was a pretty big deal for the Chaparrales. Yeah, you know, I think that um, we're kind of we're kind of in a unique spot. We um, we uh, yeah, we haven't won any conference games, which I I think is a little bit of a surprise. Um, But the reality is, like going down to going down to St. Mary's, you know, at that point they were nationally ranked and and had been playing really well. And um, you know, the 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 reality was both the goals that they scored were were mistakes made by us. Um, You know, a ball being passed back under no pressure and a center back letting it go under their foot and uh, the ball just going straight to their forward who then gets, you know, gets to score a goal. It's, it's a mistake that you just don't see very often, um, you know, and you hope that it's the only one you'll see all year. And, you know, it, it, it just is what it is. You know, you, 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 you make that type of mistake and your decision is, okay, well, we can roll over or we can find a way to claw ourselves back into this game. And um, a little bit later, we gave up a set piece um, and it was one that we'd seen on film and one that we had talked about on end and we had worked on in training. And, um, you know, we switched off for just a second and did exactly what we shouldn't have done. And they got a second goal on us pretty early there. And um, but proud of the guys for for also scoring a set piece. Um you know, right before the half to make it two to one. And then, you know, halftime, we simply just talked about the uh, the fact that, you know, all we have to do is get one more goal. It's one goal at a time. We'll scratch our way back into this game. Um, and the boys did that. You know, they kept playing. And, and the reality was we had other chances to put the game, you know, to, to win the game uh, throughout it as well. And then, you know, we got a red card um, on a foul that I definitely don't think was a red card. It was it was our players first foul of the game. And, um you know, maybe a yellow card, but definitely not a red. And it, it, the game was just, uh, the game was kind of back and forth. And, um, I think it was a tough game to manage for the officials. And, um, 
you know, at the end of the day, he made a decision. And so we go down with a red card and, you know, now it's now we have to figure out a way to defend a little bit more. Um, but luckily we got a goal and, and, and right, literally right at the end, we had a wide open header, um, to, to, that we could have scored and we could have won the game three to two. So at the end of the day, I'm proud of the guys they are on the road. They get a point against a nationally ranked team and, um, you know, tough place to play. And so, you know, we'll, we'll take it and, you know, you hope you do well after that, but, um, we know how that went with WT. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that was how that game went. Yeah, that was a game that, you know, you could tell there's a lot of emotion in that game against St. Mary's. A lot of bookings, just uh, a lot of guys out there competing. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, as, as college students, you kind of lose your head and, and get uh, so swept up in the emotions of the game. But at the end of the day, it's a uh, it was a good result on the road. But then you also just mentioned it. You, you get to come home in front of a home crowd on a Saturday night and one of what we were talking before this, but one of the weirdest first halves of soccer that you've seen, and that was, uh, you know, rivalry game, West Texas A&M, and they just come out swinging from the get-go. They score five goals in one half, and that's probably a game that you look back on and you just kind of have to forget it just because that's a, you know, 5-0 is a very tough result, especially in one half of soccer. Yeah. Yeah, the game was really weird. Um, you know, we, we, I thought the guys, you know, they come off that St. Mary's win. I thought they prepped well in practice and things like that. And, um, you know, we, we were, we definitely wanted to play WT again just because earlier in the year, you know, it was our only loss of the season. Um, and we felt like we didn't, we didn't really show up for that game either. And, then again, you know, they come to our place and it's a conference game and it's your first conference home open, you know, your home opener for conference. And, you know, we, we, I, I honestly, I even told my assistant coaches during the warm ups, I said, you know, I think this is our best warm up we've had all year. The guys were, were firing really well and they were, they were doing really well in the possession. But then they, when we went to finishing, they were, they were scoring everything and hitting the ball with confidence. And, and I was like, you know, th- this is the best warm up we've had. So hopefully, the, you know, it can translate into the game. Um, you know, and it was weird because it's like the, the, ex- almost the exact same mistake we made in our back line from our center backs against St. Mary's that first goal, um, was literally almost identical to the mistake we made against WT. Um, and I sit there and just go, what are the chances of, of pretty much doing the same thing in two games back to back? Um, you know, we swing at a ball under no pressure and just completely miss the ball and their forward receives it and, and puts the ball away. Um, so I think I think doing that that early just kind of caught us off. Like, what in the world just happened? How did you know you're asking yourself questions as a player? And I think I think then, you know, you're you're still wrestling with that in your head as the game's going. And next thing you know, you give up another goal and you're going, OK, this wasn't the part of the script today. And then you're kind of shell shocked, including myself a little bit on the sideline. I'm shell shocked and, um, you know, then they get a third one and now it's like the holes just being dug and you, you're, you're, you're not seeing a way out of it. And I think that the guys on the field just kind of, I don't want to say gave up, but just we're just questioning so much, like what in the world's happening right now. And next thing you know, you're down five Oh and, you know, the energy's dropped and, you know, you feel like there's no way we're coming back out of this. So at the end of the day, at halftime, it was a, it was a, it was an eye opener for the guys who were on the field because they needed to wake up. Um, and so we decided to make some changes, um, and, and just p- put guys in and hopefully play with more heart. And at that point, it's a pride thing. Like just, you can't go out there and concede another goal. Like, obviously we got to try and score, but the reality is like you're playing for your ego and your pride a little bit right now. And you know, the guys that went in, you know, I think stepped up, they, they, they took the chance and they ran with it. And, um, you know, we didn't give up another goal the rest of the game, which was huge. So I take that as a positive. Um, and, you know, but that was a very, uh, humbling moment for us, for our team. And, and, but I think at the end of the day, I also said, you know what, this could be a good thing for our team. It's good to sometimes be slapped in the face and, and woken up a little bit. Um, and that's what happened to us. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, that, that, that result isn't fun to, fun to swallow, but it is what it is. And we, you know, we needed to wake up. Yeah. And it's a result that, yeah, you don't, you don't want to see the result, but it can kind of help you reevaluate things and kind of 
gauge where your focus is as a team and just kind of see uh, how different personnel respond. And we saw in the second half of that game, Connor Pettigrew at keeper. You saw a bunch of different players who've had who had seen some little time actually uh, get into the game and try to create some chances. And, and and then of course after the after the WT game, you see back to back games where you draw z- zero to zero uh, last Wednesday hosting Eastern New Mexico here in, in Lubbock, Texas, and then on the road at uh, a ranked UT Tyler team at a uh, Perkins Soccer Complex, and uh, you know again it's, you've kind of you're st- still kind of waiting on that first conference uh, win, but. When you when you take a look at the team right now and where things are, how how do you get the team to respond and try to really continue to push for a positive result? Yeah, I mean it's one of those things where like I'm never going to be the guy to throw in the towel. Um, we're just going to have to find a way to keep trying to get results. Um, the the Eastern game was a very unique game because uh, for us it felt like it's a must win game. Uh, and I think that I think that we're a better team, and I think that we should have found a way to get a result. Um, it's a tough game though because uh, the, of the way that Eastern play. They're well coached. They're organized. They're especially organized defensively. Um, and so defensively, they sit in a five three two, and it makes it extremely extremely difficult to break a team down when you're sitting that deep with that many players behind the ball, especially in your own eighteen almost. And they're looking to counterattack because they have a lot of speed up top and they're looking to create, you know, make you come forward to open up space behind you. And I thought to myself, you know, we've we've kind of struggled to, to, to score some goals. And as a coaching staff, we, we decided, you know, it could be best to try and flip the script on them a little bit. And we decided we're going to change our shape just a little bit um, defensively. Uh, offensively, things stayed the same, but like defensively, we wanted to change our shape a little bit. And we decided to kind of sit back on them. And the reason being was just because if we press them, you know, we're always up in their half and we risk the counterattack and transition. And we decided, you know, let's just eliminate what they're good at. And then let's figure out a way to get their center backs. There are three center backs who I don't think are their strongest players. They're good players, but I don't, I think they have, they're, they're a lot stronger from the midfield going forward is where they're really dangerous. And we decided, Hey, let's, uh, Let's sit back on them and let's try and draw their center backs out, you know, and pull them forward and make them make the decisions on the ball. And we thought maybe they'd give it to us a couple of times and they did. And we created multiple chances in that game um, and we just couldn't score. Um, and at the end of the day, I think they had one good chance throughout the whole 90 minutes. Um, so, you know, defensively, we did a really good job. Um, it's just uh, going forward that we struggled. Um but at the end of the day, I think the guys responded well, you know, from the U- from the WT game. They stuck to a game plan. They didn't switch off. They stayed focused um, and they tried to get away to get a result. And then you look at you go to UT Tyler and obviously it's a tough game on the road and it's a great atmosphere. And it's but it's a long drive. It took us we left at 830 a.m. and was stopping in Abilene to practice and have lunch and then get to the, you know, stopping at a gas station um, and then getting to Tyler. You know, we left here at 830 a.m. and we weren't to the hotel till about 8 30 p.m. Um, so it's just a really, really long day. Um you know, you get there and, you know, it's an earlier kickoff than usual for us. Um, but I think that was good for us um, at the end of the, at the end of the day. And we get to UT Tyler and, you know, we, we have a game plan set for that game. And I think the game plan worked really well. Um, we, we, we didn't concede any goals, which is obviously huge. Um, but we, we hit the post on them twice. Um, their keeper made seven good saves throughout the game. Um, we scored a free kick that, that, that was a goal that got called offside and we watched it immediately on, on our iPad and it wasn't offside. It should have counted. Um, so we, we just kind of fell on the wrong side of things, uh, in that game. Um, but I'm proud of the guys for, for another 90 minutes of sticking to a game plan, doing it, seeing that it can create lots of opportunities for us and that we can keep the ball out of our net. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, uh, you, you got to score goals and, you know, the, 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 the opportunities were there. You just gotta, you gotta put them away. Um, and we just, we just didn't put them away. And, and the reality is this, this league top to bottom is, is so tough. I feel that anyone in this league could probably beat anyone on any given day or get a, you know, a decent result, maybe other than, you know, one team in this conference, uh, but even like a team at the bottom of this conference can play so tough for 90 minutes and, 
the conference season is fairly short. There's not a lot of teams in, uh, in LSC men's soccer. I believe there's one less than there is on the women's side. So you play a shorter conference schedule and, and you have you don't have very much time to you know, try to pick up a lot of positive results. So it's an absolute grind. And like I said, you're in Tyler and you get home extremely late, but you still see the guys fighting it. And, and I'm sure it's, you know, apparent to them that uh, things are getting towards the end of the season. And uh, I'm sure, I'm sure they know the record and they know that, you know, there's still a lot of soccer to be played, but uh, it's, uh, almost time to uh, get something going. Yeah, I mean, we we feel the pressure for sure. I mean, here's here's the reality: is you know, this is like you said. I mean, this this no doubt in my mind is is either the top or the second to top NCAA Division Two men's soccer conference in the country. And as you said, literally any team can beat any team on any given day in this conference. And like, for example, you take this weekend and you look at Texas A and M International; they were up two nil within. You know, they scored two goals within a minute and a half of each other on MSU and were up 2 nil on them at, at, in Laredo. And now at the end of the day, MSU went and got three goals and were up 3-2 at the half. And then Texas A&M International go tie the game 3-3. And then MSU's really, really switched on and found a way to win 6-3. to You know what I mean? But at the end of the day... You know, if if maybe they score those two goals and maybe change their shape or change something up, maybe they find a way to win that game two to one or tie two to two. And, you know, it changes the whole conference standings and everything. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's a very, very tough conference. It, all the coaches are, are very good coaches. The teams are well organized. Um and and it makes it really tough. And at the end of the day, we got to find a way to get results. Um, and we're not going to we're not going to make excuses for anything. We're just going to we're going to keep working on the things we need to work on. And we're going to try and improve. And um, yeah, I mean, we know the pressure is on us to, to find a way to get results. The reality, though, is most of the teams that we've lost to are teams that have, have been unbeaten or at, at the top. Um, you know, I, I it, you know, I think WT will probably be ranked uh, here in the next ranking or, or next two rankings. Um, you know, we've only lost two games all year. That's a huge positive um, that that we've only lost twice. And, and both those losses are against the same team, uh, ironically enough. And um, so I'm I'm happy about that. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a good thing. Um but yeah, we, we have to find a way to get results and we have to find a way to put the ball in the back of the net. Um, and we got to find a way to get some results off of these last five games. Um, you know, MSU, I think is going to be a, a back and forth game. I think we got to figure out a way to defend really, really well and organized. Um, and then we got to find a way, uh, maybe to, to, to definitely take advantage of the chances we get in that game. Um, but after that game, I think that a lot of the teams we play are going to be more open ended. Um, and we got to find a way to get results out of those games for sure. You just mentioned them, but Midwestern State is up next on the schedule. It doesn't get uh, any tougher than this one. The as as of the most recent United Soccer Coaches poll, number two in the nation, that may be subject to change as that that'll come out sometime today or tomorrow. Midwestern State twelve zero and one. They're on a program record ten straight wins on the season, and you hear names like Mire Escobar, and you know that this is a team that garners a lot of respect and for a good reason too and uh but they'll be coming to lubbock on wednesday night that game will be at 7 p.m uh coach you you know this team very very well um it's always a tough team to play in for a good reason uh and you kind of just talked about playing them but what are you looking forward to the most in this match yeah, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a really a really good college game. Um you know, I Midwestern State is obviously a powerhouse in, in Division 2 soccer. They have been for many many years. They're well coached, they're well organized. Um and they're they're a tough team to a tough team first off to even beat and then they're they're a tough point, a team to even get sometimes a point out of because they usually force you into either having to come out and play them and, and find a way to get back into the game or or uh, or they or they beat you and you know the guy for me I love it I love the opportunity I love being an underdog uh, I don't you know you're the number two team in the nation and that's great and I'm gonna give you the respect you deserve but we're gonna try and come up with a game plan to make things hard for you um, and I think that's all we can do and 
at the end of the day, the guys, the reality is we'll prepare well and the guys have to have to have to come out onto the field and they have to perform. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can you can have the best game plan in the world. But if we don't perform as a team and we don't do it together, we're going to struggle. And uh, so I our big thing is to to make sure that our guys come out. They put in a good performance. And what we talk about on our team a lot is at the end of the day, win, lose, draw, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, when you put your head on your pillow, you better be able to go to bed and go, I gave it everything I had, every ounce of energy, every bit of effort I gave it. And I gave everything for my team. And at the end of the day, if you can do that, you know, you can sleep with peace. Um, but if you go out there and you 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 leave anything on the field or, or you walk off the field with regrets because you could have done a little more or done a little bit, uh, something done a little bit differently or whatever, you know, that's where we have the issues. Um, and I think there's been games like that this year where we left the field and we said, you know, there was more we could have done and we should have done. Um, so that's that's the goal at the end of the day is just to, to go out there, um, enjoy the game, um, try and play in a way that causes them problems, try and take advantage of our opportunities um, and, and give 100% effort because I think that's what God calls us to and that's the effort that we should be putting into the game. That game will be on the Shap Radio Sports Network Wednesday, 640 pregame on 99.1 FM and ShapRadio.com. Kickoff live from the LSU Soccer and Track Complex at 7 p.m. And then Saturday, the Shap Rails are at Oklahoma Christian uh, for a 5 p.m. kickoff in Oklahoma City, uh, a team that last time out there was a dr- drew with uh here in Lubbock uh in in a game that's a non-conference match but you get another chance at these guys to get a positive result uh, when when it uh you know in conference play when it not saying that it didn't matter last time but it, you know it matters just a little bit more when it's a conference match um what are you expecting out of Oklahoma, Oklahoma Christian this time and what do you want to uh, see in that match yeah, I mean, here's the reality. Oklahoma Christian, when they played us the first time, was down some players. They had lost some key guys uh, due to injury. I think they got those guys back. Um, the other thing is they're at home. They're very good at home. You know, I mean, most teams are usually a little bit better at home, but I think they're substantially better at home than they are on the road. They're a good team on the road as well, but I think that at home they're 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 quite dangerous. They get really good support there, and they have a lot of people at the games, and you know they're heckling you all game long, and you know it can be it can be a tough atmosphere to play in. It's also a long drive, um, so you 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 got to travel well, and you got to travel with maturity and. Um, you know, so, but at the end of the day, I, I think they're a good team. They're definitely well coached. Um, and it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a back and forth game. But as you said, you know, the, at the end of the day, you got to get results and we're going to do everything we can in that game to try and get a result out of it. Um, you know, and hopefully get, hopefully get a win because it'd be, it'd be absolutely huge for us. Um, but yeah, as you know, it's, it's a tough conference. Um, and, and in all, in all transparency, I, I find myself in like a weird spot because I don't know that I've ever tied six games in my life. And, um, this is, this is new, new territory for me that I'm even having to navigate. So, um, you know, we, we got to find a way to bounce back and we got to find a way to put the ball in the back of the net. And we said that multiple times and on the road, that can be tough, but we have to figure out a way to get it done. Chaparral's are still looking for their first win in a month when they beat Northwest Nazarene 1-0, but hey, no better chance than to do it against the second best team in the nation. Well, coach, before we go, I uh, wanted to get, hit you with some quick uh, get to know you questions. So we'll have a little fun with this and uh, let the audience know a little bit more about uh, Colin Co. Now, coach, uh, what is your favorite place to eat here in Lubbock? Oh, boy. Um uh, probably a little food taco truck, uh, near my house. Um, we go there sometimes on Sundays with the wife and, uh, that's probably my favorite place. All right, coach. So pregame, you know, I don't know exactly what your uh, ritual is, but, uh, what, what is something that you always do before a soccer match? Uh, honestly, uh, I, I tend to just want to be away from people for a few minutes and just kind of clarify things in my own mind. Um, and just, you know, just spend some time praying and just thanking the Lord for the opportunity and the blessing that we have to, to be able to coach and and impact lives. And, um, so usually I'll just kind of step out of the office for a little bit, um, and just try and clear my mind a little bit, calm down and just, just, uh, try and be focused, um, and just, uh, ready for the game and be able to prepare to use words wisely, um, especially with players, refs, things like that. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's kind of, I guess my ritual. What's your favorite song artist? Oh boy, man. I don't listen to a lot of music. Uh, 
I like country music, so probably Rodney Atkins. It's not a bad pick right there. <laughs> All right, Coach. Um, let's see. When you're not coaching soccer, what are you doing at home? Yeah, right now I'm uh, doing a to-do list, you know, just trying to get ready for <laughs> these twins. Um, so doing a lot of that. Um, but I enjoy uh, – I'm a family guy, so like I just enjoy being around my wife and my 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 family. Um, um, but other than that, I enjoy hunting, uh, enjoy fishing, enjoy being outdoors, um, dirt biking, and things like that. Just just like being in nature. What what is your? You've been here for a little over a year now. What is your favorite thing about Lubbock and West Texas? Uh, the the people. Um, just people are people are so nice. Um, and it's refreshing. You know what I mean? Um, I, I've, I've genuinely, uh, I don't know that I've ever been in a place where, where people are so kind and just willing to help and offer help and, um, you know, things like that. So yeah, I, I'd say the people definitely make West Texas what it is. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed, uh, becoming a part of the community. Coach, as always, do you have anything else you'd like to share with Shap Nation before we close? No, come out, support the guys. Um, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's been quite the year. It's been a different type of year, um, but we need all the help we can get. And, and having having fans in the in the stands is is massive, um, especially for home games. So, uh, you know, what 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 better game to come to than being able to to watch the Shaps play against uh, the number two team in the country and to be able to do it on our field in front of our fans? It's going to be an exciting night. The Matadors are coming as well uh, for this game, which is which is massive. Um, so, you know, the home hometown summer team. Uh, and the MPSL will be there. Um, hopefully, bring some drums and some things like that, and um, admissions free. So, hopefully, people will come out and support. If there's one thing I know about the Mozos, is they'll definitely bring the flags in the drums. So that should be yeah. a very fun time. Encourage y'all to come out Wednesday night, and if not again, you can catch the Midwestern State game on the Shap Radio Sports Network. And then Saturday, of course, Shap Rouse are in Oklahoma City taking on the Oklahoma Christian Eagles. Uh, that was head coach Colin Cohen of the Chaparral's men's soccer team. This is the LCU Coaches Show presented by the Chap Radio Sports Network and the LCU Podcast. We're back on the LCU Coaches Show, and we're now joined by head coach of LCU Volleyball, Keith Gibney. Coach, thank you for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. First off, welcome back as well. You've been a, a couple days back from the four-game road trip. Um, so looking back at that trip, uh, three games that were victories, three out of the four, uh, winning in Wichita Falls, Austin, and San Antonio. What was the biggest factor to this overall success during that long stretch? Yeah, biggest factor, it's hard to say. I, I do feel like our girls have been good on the road where they don't get phased by some of the nuances and, and games that are different, you know, with crowds, lights, gyms, and all that. And, you know, it's it's always tough on the road and just things feel different, but I don't feel like, like they let that affect them all that much. So that was really good to see. Um, going in, you just have no idea. You just try to steal some games on the road here and there. And we knew that was a really tough stretch. So winning those first three, um, huge confidence builder, felt really good about every one of those wins. Some of them were comeback wins. And we didn't play great all the time, but they definitely did what they needed to do. And then that fourth one was Texas Women's, who they have our number and they're extremely athletic. Um, we didn't play great but we we didn't play terrible they're they're just a really quality team and beat us soundly and then lc returned back home losing last friday to angelo state but then you did bounce back on saturday um throughout this busy last couple of weeks have you noticed any level of fatigue uh on the team and then as you go forward the rest of the year just a few weeks left before your bye week uh what are your plans to kind of manage that workload yeah good question um you know, we're we're definitely kind of rounding third and heading for home, to use another baseball term for, for Coach Denning. Um, <laughs> we, we, we're a little bit beat up. Um, nothing that's keeping girls out of playing altogether, but we're trying to preserve them a little bit in practice. Volleyball is so much overuse with jumping and landing and swinging where we would try to protect their arms. Um, we, had, we had three girls with a doctor yesterday, all just on – you know, kind of various injuries, some tendonitis and things like that. So we're trying to trying to keep them going and tr trying to trying to finish. All, all three of them, I think, can finish the year, but it's just a matter of you know getting the rehab and the right treatment and everything. And then we've got two seniors, and I feel like this time of year for seniors, they're 
they're kind of running on fumes. They've, they've beaten their bodies up over the last 10 or 12 years and they're just giving it all they got. And um, that's definitely the true with, with our two seniors this year. Absolutely. I can speak to that myself. Yeah. But a uh, good thing now about coming back from the road trip is that you have a four game homestand on the other end of it. So getting that win against UTPB Saturday, uh, LCU looks forward to two more home games this weekend. Um, and as we get closer to that end of the regular season, how valuable is this time at home and making sure you take advantage of of the sleep as well as the home environment. Yeah. Well, I mean, back to back home weekends almost feels like we're off in the middle of the week because of the way the previous two weeks played out. It was such a grind in the travel and everything. So this week has been kind of nice. We're into a normal practice routine. Um, having the weekend, the weekends on either end where we're hosting, you know, it's just great opportunities there for home games. And then two really quality opponents who we see this weekend. Um, they could be really important as far as, um, potential postseason and standings in the conference. So um, they're aware of that. Um, I like the fact that we're at home, but we're definitely some, you know, possibly big games that we got to try to take care of business. Looking at this last match in particular, before we see what's coming up this weekend, LCU beat Permian Basin after dropping the first set. They rebound for the next three sets, and we saw career-high performances as well from Lacey Schooley with 16 kills, Callie Dolland with 10 blocks. Uh, what could you speak on about those stat lines and how valuable they were? Yeah, it's kind of funny because Callie really struggled on Friday night. Um, in fact, she even got pulled towards the end and, you know, she knew she was struggling, but then the way turn around and do that on Saturday was awesome. Um, Lacey did not play as a right side hitter. The first time we played UTPB, I, I call them the peanut butter Falcons uh, <laughs> just cause they're, uh, they're the Falcons and it, it goes with it. Um, but playing them, she, she wasn't our right side hitter and we had since moved her in that. So I don't think they really were prepared for that or just um, knew what she was able to do. And then she went in there and did a really good job. And we've, we might've had better wins this year, but that might've been one of the more satisfying wins um, after they beat us the first time. Um, a lot of our Shap faithful were not really um, impressed with that team and how they handled victory. Um, and so getting to um, exact a little revenge there, especially in the conference game, that did make it a really satisfying win. Would that. you would you say that that was a coaching master class? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no nothing master and coaching going together. I just try to show up on time and let them take care of the business there. But um, I guess it looks like we just made all these quality adjustments and it was a superior coaching move. Um, really, what happens? We didn't play all that great the first time, and they managed to get right. So. And one of the satisfying things that did come out of that game against UTPB was in the fourth set, uh, Lady Shep's go on a 17 to one run to end the game yeah. and win the fourth set 25 to 10. H have you ever seen a sequence like that in volleyball? And what were your thoughts as it just kept going and going? Yeah, n no, I haven't seen that in maybe in junior high where you get some little girl that can run off a bunch of serves because nobody can pass it and she's just another level. But at our level, that just does not happen very often. Eventually, somebody's going to side out. A lot of times you get to that point and the server, they try to rip one and they get themselves off that line just by a service error. But Caden got on that line. I think they may have burned both their timeouts in that run. Um, at that point, the match was kind of in hand. But I mean, we talked about putting the nail in the coffin. And, you know, even before that match, I said, I don't want to win. I want to beat them badly. And so to end the match on on that run, I think they finally sided out at 24, but it was well in hand. Um, they, they shut down. Their bench got quiet. They didn't even have a look of belief in them by the time it was over. And that was fun just to kind of watch that happen. And we actually talk about teams that – I wouldn't refer to as very disciplined, who is all you got to do is kind of stay in it. And eventually they can implode on themselves. And that was the epitome of what happened. They kind of made me look brilliant to my team because I said, you guys hang around and uh, something like that can happen. And that's exactly the way it worked out. But it also props to our setter for being able to go on that run and run all those off that, you know, it doesn't happen much. Yeah, it's a satisfying win. But now as we look to the rest of the season, you try to carry that momentum in a crucial part of the year where you're coming up against three teams who are right around the same level of the conference standings as you all and fighting for that, you know, position in the conference tournament to come later on. Uh, is there a, any level of heightened urgency as you get to this point in the year, knowing that every single one of these games matter? Yeah, there is. I mean, we we post the standings so the girls can see, and that's in the front of their brain. Um, the two teams we have are 
are winnable games, but they're both very good. They beat us last year. Kingsville, who we have on Friday, is kind of a wild card because they beat some really good teams, but then they lost to somebody they probably shouldn't have. So um, they definitely mean something um, more than the others. And like I said, winnable, but tough. And the girls know that. As we, as you mentioned, uh, Friday, it is Texas A&M Kingsville and then Saturday, Texas A&M International. So now as we sign off and move around to the, the round table, what are some <laughs> words of encouragement to Shap Nation to make sure they come out this weekend and, and create an atmosphere? Yeah, well, there's just a lot going on this yeah. week. I mean, even starting today with baseball doing their duck skunk, which is always a fun time of year. And I, I like baseball a little bit. Um, you got soccer at home on Wednesday. We with women's soccer, we talk all the time, and we always remark. It seems like we overlap so much because I think they have a one o'clock start on Saturday, and we start at two o'clock. Am I correct there? Yep. And so it's just it's just tough because we like going to their games. They come to ours, and obviously we want fans at both. So we just encourage everybody to get involved any way they can and try to try to see some action this week. Yeah, we're, lo- we're looking forward to it, all the action on campus. So thank you again for joining us. I know you got practice in a little yeah. bit, so you're free to you know make your way over there or stay tuned for a little bit. But we also welcome in head women's soccer coach, Alex Denning. So coach, thank you for joining us. And it was a great question you asked uh, Coach Gibney a little earlier, but uh, looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, thank you. Always yeah. here to learn from from Gibbs. Yeah, I, I wish have a I, really good question for you. I wish I could stick around and I've ask got one more. Some, some tough question. All right. If you let's, had to be a it. bump, a set or a spike what would you be and why <laughs> well first of all we say pass set spike <laughs> okay so bump so bump a, a little bit of an antiquated which one of those would i would be yeah uh, well i'm gonna go with the with the spike with the attack that that's the aggressive that's that's the fun and if you had a cheer after you spiked it what would it be Oh man, I'm not a rah rah guy <laughs> at all it would probably be a quiet little fist bump to my setter and say thanks I like that. Awesome right. stuff. Go get them. All right. Thank you. Coach, thank you for joining us. Great question as well. But uh, as we look at the Lady Shep soccer program, six, four, and three overall in the season, three, three, and one in conference play. Um, it's been a while since you've been on the show. So what are kind of some of your overall thoughts on this stretch of the season? Yeah, it's been a season. Uh, it feels like it's been about three or four or five <laughs> seasons. Yep. Um, there is something new every day. Uh, honestly, I think that what I've taken from most of this year is that I'm really proud of the team pushing through and dealing with any adversity that we've had um, and just making sure that we're ready to go and um, get their all at every game. Looking at the last couple of weeks, there have been some losses and then bounce back wins. So what could you speak about your team's resiliency at this later portion of the conference season to you know keep things afloat? Yeah, I think... We we don't know what's coming each day right now. Um, I feel like every time we set up a lineup a couple of days before a game, we know that that's not going to be the lineup because something has happened. Um, and the team's done good of just filling in, next man up, like ready to go. And so that's been huge. And then, you know, if we lose a game we're not supposed to or we don't play our best, there has definitely been some like looking at ourselves and trying to figure out how to fix that and working together as a team to recognize what we can fix to be better for the next game. Looking at last week against West Texas A&M on the road, the lone score of the match came from the conference leader in goals, Lexi De La Cruz, her eighth of the year in the 14th minute of action in that one. Um, She's had an explosive start. She's number one in the conference in goals, second in assist. So from the coaching perspective, as we've gone game to game, uh, how have you been able to work around the intense pressure and defense that she's had to face more and more, but still trying to manage her getting the amount of looks that may the team successful yeah i think lexi lexi desires to be very coachable like she wants to learn different techniques or things that'll help her uh beat players who are expecting certain things of her and so that's been good that's been huge um she also just works really hard which is how she scored versus wt at the same time i felt like between her and and emmy up top we probably should have scored four by halftime and then who knows after that um so there's still just little pieces that we have to kind of sharpen up on to, to, I think, get the results that we probably deserve. Like, I think a 1-0 result was probably much kinder than it should have been after that game. Um, so yeah, I think it's just reflecting on what we've seen and being open and, and telling each other where we can be better, whether that's coaches or players as well. 
You talked a little bit about the next man up mentality. You've faced a lot of injuries to this portion of the season. Uh, so in addition to Lexi, what is some other impressive production that you've seen from maybe players who weren't anticipating getting that much playing time, but rising to the occasion at this portion of the season? Yeah, I think it's, gosh, it's been all over the field. Uh, we can start in goal. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't expect Kara to start for us, and she has every single game, I believe. Yep. Um, and she's one of those kids that you love because she's going to listen to what you say and do her best every time. Like, you will never question is, are you getting what Kara can give at her best? Um, so that's been huge. Uh, the back line's kind of been all over the place. We have... Casey Store, who missed quite a few games um, and then jumped in the back line for us and has done a really good job. Uh, there's other places we'd really enjoy playing her. We just haven't had the ability to just because of injuries. Um, that really works everywhere. Like We've had quite a few kids jump in and play positions that either they're not used to or they've played a little bit um, and just make sure that they're giving their best every single time and, and growing in those games. That's been huge for us. Speaking of Kara Murray, she's been steady in her freshman year, top five in the conference in saves and save percentage. Um, And you've mentioned on our show before how she's just so eager to learn more and more and more in practice. So how have you seen her confidence level grow now as she's gotten some more conference experience to this portion? Yeah, so I think her reactions to coaching have changed a bit. It's not like, oh, no, I can't do that. I'm going to get in trouble she'll hear the correction. And I think that she's like, okay, like I've built this up so much, I can keep getting better. Um, And she does that in practice every day, but I think in games, it's a little bit different. And then honestly, as a goalkeeper, when you switch into the college game, you face things that you just don't in high school um, or even in club. And so, and I don't mean this like negative against West Texas, but especially in West Texas, you're not facing the kids who are every day playing at the highest level in club. Um, so yeah, she's switched on with that and done a great job. Now looking at this week, LCU hosts UT Tyler on Saturday. Uh, Tyler enters this one having tied their last six matches and they have eight on the year with a lot more matches still to play. So, um, what are you expecting from maybe a scrappy team like that? How does that affect your preparation and, um, look towards this matchup and then trying to combat what their recent results have been. Yeah. So we're really focused on us right now. Um, we have, we game plan, we show film, we show tendencies, things like that so that our girls are aware of what's to come. But it's very much been a season where if we play well, we are going to get a result. Um, and I think that's, that's really the conference right now. It is up and down based on who's having decent games or playing the most consistent. Uh, so that's kind of our main thought there. Tyler is scrappy. Like they will fight there. They'll be up 2-0 and they've given up a 2-0 lead. They're down 2-0 and they score two in the last 10 minutes. Like, they're, they are never out of a game. That is for sure. And, and, they're, and they're a keeper on the defensive end, second in the Lone Star Conference, and saves at 35. So as a coach, when, when you see that this keeper does a lot defensively for them and is kind of their backbone, what is your approach in attacking a high-caliber keeper? So, okay, I think saves is a sneaky stat line because it just means you've been shot on a lot it doesn't express where the shots have come from or what that looks like um for me it's more like the the average the save average you know compared to the shots you're taking at least we have a better idea of what it looks like um i don't know i've not watched her i've watched her in every game but i've not seen anything that i'm like oh we have to specifically look out for this like wt i can tell you we knew that she was going to put the ball at her foot and hold it and we knew that if we scored early on them and they did that, that would really hurt their game plan. Um, that's not necessarily the case here with Tyler. Um, so I, there's there's nothing that we've listed like special as far as how we're going to handle their goalkeeper. So now as we look at that match and the rest of the season coming up, what are some things that you're most looking forward to as we uh, get close to the postseason? Yeah, I think it'll just be seeing like what our what the grind looks like and how we handle it. Um, I, I'm confident in our team as far as what the effort is going to be there. Like they will always give effort. Uh, if we can be consistent, I think that we'll get the wins we need to make sure we make postseason. We've only missed it twice since I've been here. Um, and so I, that's my expectation of the team is make sure we get in there. And I think once that happens, literally anything in the conference can happen. Um, the top two teams, one has a loss and two ties, one has three ties. That's 
never been the case in our conference ever. Um, so everything is there for the taking. It's just seeing who can be consistent and make sure that they get it done. Absolutely. And the Lady Shaps are back at home, as we mentioned, on Saturday, October 21st. That's a 1 p.m. first touch. Uh, so, Coach, thank you for joining us and best of luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thanks so much. Everybody get out and watch the boys tomorrow and then volleyball Friday. Come watch us and then get back over to volleyball yep. Saturday. Exactly. A lot of stuff going on. So looking forward to it. All right. Thank you. Those were head coaches of LCU Volleyball, Keith Gibbony, and Lady Shap Soccer, Alex Denning. That'll do it for another episode of the LCU Coaches Show, presented by the Shap Radio Sports Network. Thank you for listening, whether it's live on 99.1 FM, online at shapradio.com, or later on the LCU podcast. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time.